Today we're going to give you the long-awaited tour of our tiny home sailboat. Meraki is a very unique boat and there were only 22 of her hulls built. They tend to go by a couple different names, CNL Explorer, Huntingford 45, or Explorer 45. So we're never totally sure how to answer, what kind of boat is she? She was built in the CNL shipyard in Taiwan in 1977, designed by a Vancouver yacht designer named Stan Huntingford. Meraki is 45 feet long with a 13 foot beam and nearly 7 foot draft. She has a full keel and is cutter rigged. So come along and check out our home on the sea. my husband Mick, our kids, Thomas and Bentley. Five years ago we had this crazy idea to travel the world with our kids and never did we imagine our mode of transportation would be a sailboat. These are my parents. It's been their lifelong dream to sail across oceans and so together a dream was born. Come along with us as we learn, laugh, <laughs> I, play with, I play with boats, and explore. And hey, don't forget to hit subscribe. I just can't stop singing. Oh, how baby, I love you. Welcome to our 45 foot floating home. It's pretty hot today, like 32 degrees or something. Celsius. Celsius. <laughs> so this tour might be pretty quick on the outside because it is cooking hot. Yep, deck's getting pretty warm. Yeah, my feet are burning. Crystal clear water is calling us. We just want to jump in. So we'll try and get through this without missing too many things. So we're just going to start up the bow of the boat here. Front we've got our pulpit and then our anchor roller. We've just got a single, single line, single anchor. The anchor in question is a Mantis 85 pound M1. We love it. Thank you, Mantis. We also have 350 feet of chain heading into an electric windlass. Now this is a manual release, which will let the chain down. And then we also have a push button to bring it up. Meraki is a cutter rig. That means we have two foresails. So we have our front jib, which is a Yankee cut. And then we also have our stay sail, which is a lower cut to fill the gap in. Both are hank on. Yeah, we're pretty torn on if we like this or not. We liked it at the start and now with all the short trips with sails going up and down, it's very labor intensive. One day we would really love to replace the forward hank on sail with a furler. We think that would make life much easier for us. Now right on the bow of the boat we have attached our life raft. Yeah, it's an eight person and we upsize it just in case we have guests on board as well to have that extra space in the life raft. It's a crew saver ISO ocean life raft. We hope we never have to use it. Yeah, we really do. Something that we love about this boat and that was a big draw to us was how wide our side decks are. So our shrouds to support the mast are all exterior mounted. A lot of the times you'll see them right in the middle of the deck and you trip over them. Ours are all on the outside and it just gives us a ton of room to be able to walk around and we love that as a safety feature on board while we're under passage. Here's our mast, our big stick. Everything is manually operated right here up on deck. We don't have any halyards back to the cockpit so every time we need to raise a sail or put it down we're up here in the open. We've got two spinnaker halyards, we've got two main halyards as well. It's really well set out, we love it. Uh, good, good lights on deck for at night. And it's just tons of room here as well to walk around on again. It's really good. One thing we don't have is lazy jacks. So when the mainsail goes down onto the boom, it kind of just pushoo, goes everywhere. We'd love to install some lazy jacks just to contain that mainsail and that's on the list to do pretty soon, I think. Steve, what a champion. This is our dinghy. It's a little high field, I think it's about nine foot, six horsepower outboard. It doesn't plane with the four of us in it, but it gets us around just fine. Putting into shore, it's very light. We keep it like this at night with our two spinnaker halogen. We just raise it up and tie it to the deck. When we're under passage, we do bring it up on deck. Forward of the mast, just back from the life raft. There's plenty of room for it and we've never had any issues with it being up on deck. 
come on into our cockpit. This is our Bimini. We just got this installed. The shade is just massive, especially where we are in Mexico. It's been a huge help and just comfort anytime we're outside. It just kind of makes this a better living space. Another huge draw to us is the space in this aft cockpit. We find it just massive. Just to put into some kind of context how big the cockpit is. You just do laps. We have a lot of storage. We have three huge storage lockers. There's so much room to put all our stuff, which enables all our decks and everywhere to just be clean of clutter, which is a huge safety bonus for us. We have a port and starboard side under the seating areas. And we also have a back one just back there where we keep all most of our sheets and lines and stuff. So the steering position is a little unique on our boat. We've, we have worm steering. So what that is, is there's no hydraulics, there's no cables. It's just kind of a direct gear and there's a bunch of cogs and a big long worm. It's like a screw. As we turn this, the screw gets turned and that translates straight down into the rudder because the throttle is in front of the wheel, but the still steering's behind us. So it's pretty much a squat and throttle and steer, which is awkward. Under passage, it's fine because you can sit on the side or in the seat. But we're used to it now. It might look a bit weird from somebody else on the outside, but it works. It works just fine. And these are the best passage chairs in the house. I love sitting up here. It's awesome. We, I made these little cushions for the rail so it's a little more comfortable. We can fit so many people in our cockpit. We've done movie nights out here with, we have a screen projector. Um, we've set it up under the Dodger. I think we had four families on board. Is that right? Three or four families and we just all squish in. As it gets dark, you turn on the movie. So this cockpit is like, we love our cockpit. It's awesome. Our solar array, we call it our dance floor. We have 1200 watts, which is massive on a boat this size, right on top of our stern arch here. Tons of solar, we're really fortunate to be able to fit that much up there. And the stern arch is just a huge bonus for us. We're able to tie so many things on, it really encloses the cockpit and makes it feel a lot safer. The wind just started picking up here, so hopefully you're not hearing too much of that on the mic. Here we are right at the stern, we've got our little barbecue here, and then also buddy our wind vane. So this is an autopilot, pretty much acts as a third crew member for us really good for steering the boat in rough conditions. I'm not going to go into how that works. We've explained that previously, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> to the best of our ability. Yeah, to the best of our ability, but yeah, great addition to the boat. We love it. We use it as often as we can under sail. We have very basic systems on Meraki. We use our iPad as a chart plotter running Navionics. We have some backup paper charts and a backup system called OpenCPN. Other than that, our instruments are limited to compasses, wind indicator, rudder direction, and a handheld anemometer. In addition to Buddy Our Wind Vane, we also have an electric autopilot by Autohelm, which you've seen us rebuild and fix a number of times. The Dodger. We had originally planned to replace this or modify it when we bought Meraki. It's actually held up really well. It's got just a little thin fiberglass top on it and then the previous owner kind of custom built really thin plywood panels for it and put some glass in it and it's been really good. It's really solid. It's getting really windy out here now. I think we've covered most things on the outside of the boat. We're going to take you down and give you a tour of the inside. Our downstairs. This is the space that we live in as a family of four. It's kind of a form of tiny home living. <laughs> we were on a really tight budget when we were shopping for Meraki and we were really fortunate to find something this big. It might seem small to a lot of land dwellers, but it's actually quite a big monohull with two separate bedrooms or cabins. So we have our separate space. The boys' bedroom is back here, which we'll show you that in a little while. And then the V-Birth, our bedroom is up front. So this is our companionway or our front door. So you come down the companionway stairs and you're in the main living quarters of the boat. This is our nav station, our navigation station. Typically it just holds a lot of junk. <laughs> because although we do have 
a ton of paper charts. We don't really have the need to use them on a regular basis. So this space is a little bit redundant, a little old school, but we have one of our chart plotters here. It's OpenCPN, which is run off of a laptop. And we have our radar set up here. We've got our VHF radio, our EPIRB, um, all those systems except for the radar we put into the boat. So if the weather's really poor, really poor visibility and we're on a night passage or something, you will see us sitting here watching all our screens and navigating from here. So I guess it's not a totally redundant space. It works. <laughs> Tucked under our nav station is a Dometic fridge freezer. We use it as a freezer. We have tons of solar, as Mick mentioned, outside. So we don't have any issue running it along with two fridges. The other amazing thing about Meraki is we have a ton of storage. Under our nav station, there's two, three cupboards that go all the way back to the side of the hall. These drawers are massive. They go all the way back. Under this hatch, it's just a slightly raised floor of about eight inches is our engine. It's a diesel naturally aspirated uh, Isuzu and it's 50 horsepower. And that's plenty for us, really good on fuel economy. It's got about a thousand hours on it. It's about 10 years old and it just runs so smooth, really reliable, we love it. Over on the port side is our kitchen or otherwise known as a galley on a boat. I never imagined having a galley this big when we first started boat shopping. I love our galley. This is the original gas oven and stove and it works beautifully. Our galley was emerald green when we bought the boat and I put up these stick on tiles and waterproof vinyl countertops. It's a temporary fix. One day we will revamp this kitchen. I actually, I really like the way it looks and it's been up for over a year now and it's held up really, really well. I'm quite impressed with the products. I can link those down below. Our galley has a ton of storage. We've got three cupboards here, three here, drawers all down here. Like it's just, it's amazing. We're so fortunate. Then we, this is our counter fridge. It probably 45 years ago was just an ice box and one of the previous owners put in a fridge compressor and made it into a fridge and it works really great. On this side is a dry storage hatch. Probably one of the few cupboards that stays cool in the boat because it's really well insulated. So it's awesome dry storage. As you come out of the galley, it's a really long walk to the bow of the boat. Midship, we have our settee or our couch and our dinette or our kitchen table. It's really not much to say about them except that again tons of storage we have two lockers at the seat of this and more storage behind the back of it it's kind of a mess our dinette is massive we can easily fit six people around it mick built this table because the table that came with marathi was a real solid base and this table can drop down and this is our guest bed so it's awesome it's a massive bed when the tabletop drops down. It's like a queen size bed. So it's really nice for guests, isn't it, Bentley? Yeah. Oh, again, tons of storage under all three of the seats around the dinette. This is our second fridge. Well, third, if whatever. We have one freezer and two fridges. This Mick installed, we had a heater here when we bought Meraki, which we have no interest in going to Alaska anytime soon. <laughs> So we took out the heater and this little 12 volt fridge fit perfectly in its spot. It's Mick built the beautiful surround. It has a nice vent. It's lovely. Okay, we keep going forward. So it's a little squishy in here, but this is the master bedroom, if you will. It has a V berth, a bed that's in the shape of a V. So it's kind of unique to a boat. Most boats have V berths at the bow because the bow goes in a V. Um, we're really fortunate. This again is a queen size bed, although it's a little narrower at the foot. It's quite large for a boat. Lots of storage, closet, drawers, more cupboards under the bed, tons of hatches. If we lift up our mattresses, we have long-term storage under there. And this is one of our two bathrooms or heads as you call it on a boat. So it's a composting toilet. You open this and if you're going number two, you flip open the flap, and then when you're done, you flush with this. So you turn the wheel. We don't have a shower on Meraki. There was one in the aft head when we bought her, but it's not really a wet head as you would normally have if you just have like a shower. You make sure that the room is completely waterproofed, and then that's called a wet head. 
and we were worried about wood rot and things like that so we took it out and we shower in the ocean or we if it's the water's too cold to shower, jump in we just shower in the cockpit and that works great right now we don't have a hose or anything in the cockpit but that is on our list to run so that we have easily accessible fresh water in the cockpit for showering but honestly the odd day I don't feel like jumping in the ocean to shower but most of the time it's really great this is like our main hatch of the boat she doesn't have too many hatches which in the heat can be a little bit tricky but this one is huge it works we are right at the foot of the V-berth bed up front in the bow. There's two little doors here and we have access to our chain locker. So that's where all the chain sits and also the windless motor is in here as well. Really easy access to everything, which is great. So right under the sole, just near the mast is where we keep our water maker. There's a ton of room down there. So our water maker pulls in seawater and filters out the salt and turns it into fresh water and that's how we can go weeks and weeks and weeks on end without needing any water from the dock. Under our dinette, seating is our battery bank. We have 1000 amp hours and that's in six volt golf cart batteries all linked together. Now as Kate showed you how much storage we had in under all our seating and in our side cabinets it's because we have a very large deep keel which houses both the water tank, fuel tank, and our engine. It's all below the cabin sole, which frees up the whole inside of the boat for storage. And we just, we love that aspect about having a full killed boat. So now we'll go to the very back of the boat to the boys' bedroom. We'll see if we can get the boys to give you a tour of their room. Hi. So, hey. this is my bed. We kind of switch out because we have what? We have one queen bed, one single bed, and we'll show you the single bed in just a sec. So this is my bed. It's, I like it. It's good. I also like the other bed, but I like this one because I can get books off this bookshelf and a little bit of hat storage. So on to Thomas. Hi. Uh, You're on your little single berth. So this is the smaller of the two beds. And you boys kind of switch in and out, don't you? Yeah, it's really small. Can't really sit up, but it's a very comfortable bed. Mm -hmm. And it's known for its head bonking. <laughs> yeah. I sleep here. <laughs> and um, down here is where we keep most of our stuff. All your toys. Nice. And there is toy storage. More storage. Open that. And there's a table Why in the way, is there a table in there? Well, I don't like it on my bed, but it fits pretty good. This is where our clothes go. And there's some socks and stuff in there. More drawers there. <laughs> this is our aft head, also known as a bathroom. It's a bathroom. So there's a toilet. It's a manual toilet. Oh, so you can just go to the bathroom. It's called an aft head because the back is called aft bye <laughs> and they call it the head because i don't know how to explain it you try and explain it no just try you got it so like the toilet used to be like you know how there's these big sailboats with like three masts mm -hmm. Hi. and they all have big bow sprits so you kind of like go out on the bow sprit and go hang so, over the side yeah at the front of the boat yeah hang over the side and do your business at the front of the boat. And sometimes you'd get really wet. So that's why it's called the head, because there was no toilet back then. You just did you it just... at the front of the boat. Well, thanks for showing us your room, guys. Huh. Do you yes. like your room on the boat? Yeah, it's the room. best room. We, sometimes we think back to how much Lego and toys we had, and we're like, how are we bored? Like, we had a whole forest, and like, we just, we just weren't that adventurous. When you go on the boat, you get more adventurous and realize the world is really safe. So you think you have less toys on the boat? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how we got bored. Like, we had all those Nerf guns, we had Lego, we had tons of Playmobil, we had a forest next to our house. So less toys on the boat, but also less boredom because we're always off exploring. True. So that is our tiny home sailboat.
Yep. If you have any specific questions, I feel like we could have made this video hours long yeah. and gone into all the systems. When we originally planned this video, I thought it'd be two episodes with how much detail we wanted to go through, and then we decided to just condense it into one. Briefly skip over a bit of everything, and then if anybody wants to know any other information, they can just ask us and we can elaborate on any of those. Yeah, so leave a comment below if you have questions about some things that we've just kind of scraped the surface about, because, I don't know, boats are so involved, there's so many systems, there's so much about them. We just wanted to give you a little tour so you could get a better feel of what this boat is like. It's such a unique boat. There was only 22 of them made. We always get a ton of questions yeah. about it. And that's 22 of different layouts. Yeah, that's right. With a catch center cockpit versus the aft cockpit cutter, which is what we have. I think there's only like four of these, five maybe. Of We've our only version. ever seen one other one. And then we had one person reach out to us and say, oh, I have your sister ship. So we know of three, including ours, whereas the center cockpit version, we tend to see more of. Correct. So, don't know. We don't know exactly. We love our boat. She's very unique. She's a great layout for the four of us. And like we said, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. It's not like we get a ton of comments, so we'll be able to respond to all of yep. them. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. We hope you enjoyed this tour. Again, later down the track, we might do some in-depth things at certain other certain aspects. Yeah, Mick really wants to dive more into our systems and the things we've set up because it, it's definitely an interest of his. And he's spent a lot of time learning and researching and working on our systems. So I think we'll maybe do some mini episodes or something. Mm -hmm. So let us know what you're more interested in learning more about and we will work on that for you. See ya! Bye! Raki is a cutter stay. Place the forward hand con say with a. Oh my god. Ew! Ow, my feet are. We have three huge storage lockers that can fit probably six people down in each one. Not There's... that we're into smuggling people. No, anyway. but. So one of the awkward things with our type of steering is just pretty much driving the boat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> one of the awkward things with our type of steering. <laughs> um, so that's just like our books and um, guidebooks and stuff. Rest, whatever. I'm not. I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, when I, we originally did the list, or I did anyway, I thought. Two episodes, but we just decided to condense it. Skip. Pit version. We fly flying, learning and fit.